Okay, so first of all, the formula that we are going to be using is the forecast dot linear formula. And the idea behind this formula is that you give it a bunch of y values and a bunch of x values, and it will then work out values in the future, hence the name forecast. However, there's nothing stopping you from also using this formula to work out values in the middle of a data set. So in this case, this will be the x value, and then these will be the known y's, and these will be the known x's, and then we'll close brackets and enter, and we get the number 6. I will also plot these on a scatter chart, and then we will add in a trend line. And what the forecast formula is doing is taking all of the data points and calculating a linear trend line. Then it takes the x value, which in my case is 3, and uses the trend line to work out what the y value is, which in my case is 6. And the forecast formula can work with just four values, two y values and two x values. So we are going to use this formula to fill in the missing values in this data set. First of all, I need to take the Y column and I need to copy this twice. And this will become Y before and Y after. Then I'll select all of the Y before column and then go to find and select and go to special and then I will select constants and select just the error values and OK. And now I have just the missing values selected, so I'll go up to the formula bar and delete the NA error, then type in and equals, and the active cell at the moment is C6, so I need to select the cell just above this, and then use the keyboard shortcut Control enter to fill that formula into all of the cells that I have selected. And while I still have them selected, I am going to highlight them to make them easier to see. And now all of these formulas are linking to the cell above. So in every case, we are taking the data point that is just before the gap, and then we are bringing that number down. And that's also what we're doing here. Now we will do the same thing for the Y after column. So we'll select all of this and then go to find and select and go to special. And again, we will select just the error values and OK. And then go to the formula bar and type in an equals. And this time we need to select the cell below the active cell. And then press Control Enter to put the formula into all of the selected cells. And then we'll highlight these. And this time all of the formulas are looking at the cell below. So this time we are taking the data point that comes just after the gap. And then we are bringing that number upwards. Now we need to do the same thing, but for the x values. So I will create two copies of this. And this will be x before and x after. Then I will add in filter buttons to this table and then filter the y column for just the na errors and OK. Now I can select all of the values in the x before column and type equals. And now I need to select the cell above the active cell, but I can't actually select it because it is hidden. So I'll just type in the cell reference. At the moment, the active cell is E6. So I will type in the cell reference E5 and then press Control Enter to get that formula into all of these cells. And then highlight this, and then we can clear the filter. And now 
you can see that in every one of these cells, we are referencing to the cell above it. And this time we have the date and we are bringing it down. Now I'll do the same thing for the X after column. So we'll filter for the Y column again and select just the NA errors. And then select all of the cells in this column and type equals. And then this time we need the cell reference just after the active cell. So the active cell is F6, so we need to type in F7 and control enter. And then we'll highlight all these cells and then clear the filter. And this time all of the formulas are referencing to the cell below. And we are now taking the date and bringing it up. Now that we've got everything set up, we can actually use the forecast formula. So we will do equals forecast.linear, and the x value will be this value here. And these are the known y values, and these are the known x values, and then enter. And we will double click to send this formula down. Now, rather conveniently, we will get a divide by zero error for all of the values that already have a number. So we only end up with numbers for the missing values. Here we have 393.59, and here we have 393.73. And then these two numbers here are in between these numbers. We can see this more clearly by plotting the first few data points. And then I will select the forecast column and copy and paste these data points in as well. Now the divide by zero error is plotted as zero, so we need to wrap the if error formula around this and say that if it is an error, I want it to show me the NA error instead, and that will stop it from being plotted. And then I'll double click to send that down. And now we can see that the numbers that we get from the forecast formula line up with the actual data. Now we'll do this for all of the data. So I'll select the whole of the X and Y columns, and then scroll back up to the top, and we will insert a scatter chart. And now we can see the actual data, and we can also see the gaps in it. Now I'll select the whole of the forecast column and copy it, and then paste it into the chart. Now I will make the data points smaller, so this is easier to see. And now we can see that the forecast formula has done a reasonably good job of filling in the missing data. It works less well when there are big gaps in the data. Here, for example, we end up with quite a sharp straight line because this is a very big gap. But for the smaller gaps, it does a good job of guessing what the value would have been if it wasn't missing. Now there's lots of statistical tests and analysis that will not work if your dataset has missing values. So sometimes it is necessary to fill in the missing values as best you can, so you can analyze the data in the way that you want. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to do linear interpolation in Excel, and that is everything.